Hi everyone. So yes, hopefully if you've been with us over the last few weeks, we'll, we've been working our way through the book of Acts and we're going to carry on this week um, looking at the life of Stephen, um, what we know about him and what we can learn from his life. And this is obviously a massive, if you know this section, it's a massive section in the book of Acts. So um, Nigel's going to pick up a bit with it next week, but those are the things we're going to focus on today. Um, what do we know about him and what we can learn from his life? Um, so let's just start by praying, shall we? Yeah, Father God, we thank you for those in the Bible that live out lives of faith in just such incredible ways that we're able to look and and see what it means to be men and women of faith and men and women who are filled with the spirit and going after um, lives in the kingdom and lives filled with your presence Lord and I just pray that as we look this morning to the life of Stephen that you would open our eyes and open our hearts to the scriptures that you might speak directly to each one of us in Jesus name amen so um we first heard of Stephen back in Acts 6 5. So, again, if you were here with us the other week, then Zeke was speaking about the choosing of the seven. Um, and it tells us there they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And um, just when I was preparing for today, I was thinking, oh, actually, we could just stop there and do the whole thing on that, really. I was thinking, I would love for that to be what people said about me you know, full of faith and the Holy Spirit is just such a powerful starter. That's the first thing we hear about him, that he was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And I think about all the ways that people could describe me, good and bad, I guess, um, that actually that to hear those things would just be such a power, powerful thing. And it made me think how each one of us is described, what, what it is about us that other people would say. Um, and so initially that he was just a man, that that is the first thing that stuck out to people, that he was a man who was full of faith and the Holy Spirit. But we're not going to get stuck on that because I've got loads of other stuff to talk about. So um, it carries on in Acts 6, 8. It says, now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against the wisdom of the, that the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. He produced false witnesses who testified this fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. And then it continues on with this am amazing speech that he gives this sermon just walking his listeners through the old testament and and just um testifying to to who god is and, and we're not going to go into all of that today but it picks up again um in chapter seven saying but stephen full of the holy spirit looked up to heaven and saw the glory of god and jesus standing at the right hand of god look he said I see heaven open and the son of man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices. They all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. So what do we know about Stephen? Well, firstly, we know that he was full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. And we know that these were requirements that they gave initially for the seven when they were looking for the, for the seven to be in charge of the distribution of food among the poor, that that was the requirements that they were looking for. 
and and that he was identified as being of that character before he was chosen. And we know that he was, um, the wisdom that he had to speak came from the Holy Spirit. We also know that he was full of faith and power. So it, it says in there that he performed great signs and wonders. Um, and we'll talk more about that in a little while, but just even in terms of this very practical job he had, but at the same time, he was out there just performing signs and wonders as part of being filled with the spirit and um, what God had put into him in terms of his giftings. We know that he was full of grace. And when we read the bit about um, at the end about praying for forgiveness for those um, stoning him, we're just taken right back to Jesus on the cross, asking for forgiveness for those crucifying him and, it, and it's just such a powerful um just such a powerful point of who Stephen was and and his connection to the teachings and um example of Jesus just that he would in that moment and again it's one of those moments isn't it where you listen and think I wonder if I'd be doing that you know he's been stoned to death by people who told lies about him false witnesses testified against him and he's been stoned to death and he's asking for forgiveness he's praying to God for their forgiveness we also know that he was chosen as one of the first deacons because of his character but also because he was willing and available and again we'll talk more about that in a minute but just his willingness to <clears throat> step up to the the role that they had for him we know that he was a hero of the faith, that he gave bold, brave witness to Jesus. Um, no matter the consequences, he would have been fairly sure that, that the witness that he was giving was going to lead to bad places, uh, you know, because of the response he received from those around him. And we know that he was the first Christian martyr. So kind of feels like I rushed through that a little bit, but I'm so aware of time and I just wanted to spend most of our time on what we can learn from his life. What, what does that mean for us? Um, and I got five things and I'm going to try and go quick and get through all five. So the first one is God uses ordinary people. Um, and I think the danger when we read the book of Acts is that we can look at these people as not ordinary people, that we can look at them as super Christians, like, well, it's OK for them because they're these super Christians. And and I love the bit in Acts 4, 13, where it says when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus unschooled ordinary men and and it it's just so true of the people that we meet through the book of acts these are ordinary people who have been with jesus and whether that was because they'd actually been with jesus or as we progress through the new testament people who spent time in the presence of jesus spent time in the presence of god um and in John 14, 12, Jesus says, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And it's just that reminder to us that actually this, um, these amazing things we read about aren't reserved for a small amount of um, super Christians, but actually Jesus says that people will do even greater things than me. And who are those people? They're the people that believe in me. They'll do even greater things than Jesus because he's going to the Father. And I think it, it is that thing for all of us to go, none of us are off the hook. We can't go, well, I, that's not really me. And I, oh, I don't really count in that. And oh, I haven't been a Christian very long. Or oh, I actually, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we have the power in us that raised Jesus from the dead. And that is what does all of this stuff. And so that's the first thing. God uses ordinary people. The second thing is a thing that I feel like God gave to me most importantly to say today. And actually on Friday, it was the only thing I had. So it's come quite a long way since then. But um, do what God puts in front of you. And I feel like that's what God said as the main thing for today is that when I first read this I was so struck by 
that it said all of this amazing stuff about Stephen. He was full of faith and full of the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom and he was doing signs and wonders. But the apostles came to him to ask him to um, be involved with the distribution of food to the poor so that they wouldn't be bogged down with that stuff. They could be freed up for ministry and prayer and reading the word. And so he could have felt, oh, that's a, actually, that's a bit beneath me. I'm, I've got, I'm full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit and I'm full of, he could have felt like, oh, that's, oh, sorry, that's not my ministry. I'm waiting for something else. But he was willing and available and he did what God put in front of him. And because of that, it wasn't the only thing that he did. Um, it, it, yes, he was involved in, in giving food to the poor and distributing where it needed to go. But ultimately, we see him um, performing signs and wonders and, you know, go, go in and giving this amazing preach and speech about God and who God is but first he did what God put in front of him and I I just felt that that was such a powerful message for us right now that God would say to us do what I put in front of you however small or seemingly insignificant that might be and see what I will do um, so that's the second thing the third thing is just that we can learn from his life, I think, is that we, it is so important that we spend time in God's presence and in, in his word. So why was Stephen like he was? Why was he full of faith and full of wisdom and full of the Holy Spirit? Well, because he was a man who spent time in the presence of God, because he was a man who spent time in his word. Because how do we know that? Well, the, the sermon that he gives, which is so amazing, this massive speech, you couldn't give that if you didn't, if you hadn't spent time in the word of God. And we know that God gives us the word to say, but also we know that we're to spend time in the word of God. And actually, the fourth point comes back to that, which is from 1 Peter 3.15, which says, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And... Um, that just tells us that we're to know God's word and to proclaim it boldly. And actually also, and this is really encouraging, that we don't necessarily have to go looking for opportunities to preach at people. Like, like even in terms of evangelism, some people are natural evangelists. Clive is a natural evangelist. I am not. <laughs> and But I never feel like that's something we have to stress about. Some of us do. We're like, oh, my goodness, I'm not very good at just going and sharing about who God is. But in this situation, it came to Stephen. Like he, he was declaring about who God was, but they started to argue with him and he was able to share about, the, about who God is and the, the story of him through the Bible. And I think actually God brings opportunities to us. And what, we, what do we need to do? Well, we need to know our Bibles and we need to always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have. Um, the final one is a tough one um which I added because I felt like I couldn't not add it um after reading about Stephen's life and that is be willing to lay down our lives what do we learn from his life that we are to be willing to lay down our lives and it's such a difficult one to wrestle with and I and I was thinking about it when I was um preparing for today and I was just thinking I always come back to this scripture from Psalm 63, 3, which says, because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. And I always think, well, if God's love is better than life, I truly hope that it ever, if it ever came to it, that I would be willing to lay down my life rather than deny Jesus. And it's something that none of us know, is it, unless we're ever put in that situation. But if we truly believe that God's love is better than life, then that, that is what I hope for myself, that I would stand firm in that. And we, we don't know why he had to die. We don't know why it had to be with that, but be like that. But I do love this quote from J.D. Greer that says, we do not know, uh, we know that the sermons we preach in our pain are louder than the ones we preach in our prosperity. And I, there's something so real about that, isn't there? The authenticity 
of those in suffering who will preach the truth of the word of God and will preach the faith that they have in Jesus and how much more real that is sometimes when we're suffering and struggling than it is when we're preaching from our prosperity. And so, quick recap, God uses ordinary people just like you and me. He calls us to do what is put in front of us, whatever that is, however small that may seem. We call to spend our time in the presence of God and in his word. And that is a challenge for most of us in the busyness of life. We're called to always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And ultimately, we're called to be willing to lay down our lives if it comes to that, because God's love is better than life. And so, Father God, I just want to finish in prayer today we we do give thanks for these heroes of the faith Lord we give thanks for the life of Stephen but we don't want to put these guys on pedestals that that we could never be that way because we are all made in your image Lord God and you have already said that those who believe in you and follow you will do even greater things than you and so we we pray Lord would you reset our hearts today would you reset our expectations that as we humbly and obediently follow you in all that you call us into, that you would do even greater things than we could ever imagine. Lord, we pray, pray be glorified through our lives. Don't, I, my prayer is that no one today would feel discounted, that as they hear this message, that no one would feel, yes, that's for everyone, but not me. Lord, you love us so much and you have made us to um, be those with gifts walking in your purposes um, fulfilling all that you've given us to do and I thank you that that's different for each one of us and that together we make up the body of Christ individual but together Lord help us to look to you for all that you call us to and do what you've put in front of us. We praise you and we worship you. And we just declare this morning that your love is better than life. In Jesus' name. Amen.